Hopefully it's not deja vu, but China is once again dealing with an outbreak and the World Health Organization is trying to figure out what's going on. In this case, China is seeing a spike in pneumonia that's primarily affecting children. Some are calling it white lung syndrome because scans of those afflicted show opaque areas inside the lungs. Now, the fact that the outbreak is happening among young people suggests it could just be a winter resurgence of known respiratory diseases rather than something new. The thing is, hospitals all around the country are filling up and people have been advised to start wearing masks and socially distance again. Also, the outbreak seems to be spreading. Sweden, the Netherlands and Denmark have all reported similar cases. It's also unusual for the World Health Organization to be so public in its calls for transparency. That doesn't mean this is going to be the next pandemic, but it could be seen as an acknowledgement by the agency that it mishandled the last one. So, do you think this is something for us to legitimately be worried about? Or has our experience with COVID just made us extra jittery? Let us know how you feel in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. It's official, Swifties rule the musical world. Spotify has released its annual wrapped list and it should be no surprise that Taylor Swift was 2023's most streamed artist worldwide. Her songs were streamed a mind-boggling 26.1 billion times this year. That put her ahead of Puerto Rican superstar Bad Bunny, who topped the list for the past three years. The Weeknd, Drake and Pezzo Paluma rounded out the global top five. Bad Bunny did lead the pack in terms of top album for the second consecutive year, surpassing 4.5 billion streams, which put him ahead of Taylor Swift and SZA. And the most streamed individual song globally was Miley Cyrus' Flowers, with 1.6 billion. Kill Bill by SZA and As It Was by Harry Styles took second and third. If we narrow our focus to just the US, Taylor Swift was of course the most streamed artist, but country pop star Morgan Wallen had a big year too. He was America's third most streamed artist and topped the most streamed songs and albums lists with Last Night and One Thing at a Time respectively. So what artists and songs made your most listened to list this year? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. How's this for bizarre? A translated version of a new book about the British royal family named King Charles and Kate Middleton as the royals who were allegedly concerned about the potential skin tone of Harry and Meghan's children. Okay, let me start closer to the beginning of this wild ride. In their blockbuster 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Harry and Meghan mentioned certain royals had concerns and conversations about how dark their future baby's skin would be. That caused such an uproar that Buckingham Palace even issued a rare statement saying the claims were being taken very seriously. But exactly which royals were involved was never confirmed, not even in the brand new tell-all by Omid Scobie, a journalist specializing on the royal family. Except somehow the Dutch translation of the book does name names, alleging it was the King and Kate. The book was quickly pulled from shelves in the Netherlands by the publisher who called it a translation error that needs to be rectified. Scobie said that the book he signed off on did not have names in it and that a full investigation was underway to find out how they got added during the translation. He also denies it was a deliberate publicity stunt. Either way, it's caused another royal scandal that's playing out on the front pages of the UK press. I'm kind of not surprised to hear King Charles was involved, but sweet old Kate Middleton, that's kind of a shocker. Let us know your take in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Your Happy Meals are getting happier. McDonald's is revamping how it makes all its burgers, including its signature Big Mac. Competition for your burger dollar has been heating up for the last few years, and McDonald's is feeling the heat. Chains like Five Guys and In-N-Out are gobbling up more market shares, so Mickey D's went back to the drawing board for a revamp. Starting in 2016, they began experimenting on how to improve the taste of their burgers. They did this first at their test kitchen in Chicago. Then, in 2018, the better experiments were tried out in Australia. And now, as we head into 2024, those changes are coming to America. Here's what you could look forward to. A new way to grill the burgers will result in juicier patties. They'll also come with a buttery brioche bun and have thicker bottoms to retain the heat. The toppings will all taste better, cheese will always be melted, onions will be juicier, and lettuce and pickles will be fresher. 
And perhaps best of all, Big Macs will come with more sauce. These changes are expected to be in all of America's McDonald's by October of 2024. What does our TikTok audience think? Is McDonald's doing enough here to compete with the likes of Five Guys and In-N-Out? We'd also like to know which burger chain you like the best. Let us know in the comments and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl are less than a month away, and we found out on Sunday which teams made the cut. And while there's certainly some cause for excitement, people are still outraged about it. Let's start with the positive and offer congratulations to Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama. On the downside, many are up in arms that Alabama got in while the College Football Playoff Selection Committee left out the undefeated Florida State Seminoles. In fairness to the committee, there was some logic to the decision. Florida State star quarterback Jordan Travis broke his leg last month, and the Seminoles looked shaky in their final season win. So the committee had to choose between the best teams now and the ones who'd earned it. And Texas and Alabama both had losses this year. In fact, Alabama lost to Texas. That's why the decision is leaving many fans asking if an unbeaten Power 5 conference champ can be left out, why play the games? I'm sure there is a lot wow. of anger in Tallahassee as a result of this. Also rubbing salt in the wounds, next year the playoffs are expanding to 12 teams, one year too late. What do you think? Did the committee mess up or does going for the best possible games make sense? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The COP28 Climate Summit is dealing with some turmoil after controversial statements by its president came to light on the weekend. According to The Guardian, Sultan Al Jaber told a panel on November 21st that there is no science out there proving the phase out of fossil fuels will keep global warming below one and a half degrees Celsius. On Monday, Al Jaber was trying to minimize the damage, telling reporters, I have said over and over that the phase down and the phase out of fossil fuel is inevitable. But given that he's also the head of the UAE's national oil company, skepticism is high. In fact, no less of an authority than Al Gore was objecting to Al Jaber's role. He was quoted as saying, they are abusing the public's trust by naming the CEO of one of the largest and least responsible oil companies in the world as head of the COP. He also noted that the UAE's greenhouse gas emissions had risen by 7.5% last year, roughly five times the global average. But what do you think? Is it important for oil companies and their leaders to be at the table, or is it up to governments to rein them in? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. In some ways, the wait for Grand Theft Auto 6 has lasted about a decade, but the game's release feels closer than ever. That's because the GTA 6 trailer was released on Monday. And if you're thinking, isn't that a day early? You're right. A leak forced Rockstar to move up their timeline. So let's have a look. To have each other Look who's back. The only way we're gonna get through this is by sticking together, being a team. It's just a taste, but it tells us a lot. For one thing, rather than the stylized retro world we're used to, this game will be very much set in the present. As you just saw, social media is represented, so fingers crossed we make a cameo. And hey, let's hear it for a female protagonist. But for many, the most important info is what's shared at the very end, coming 2025. GTA 5 sold about 190 million copies. Do you think GTA 6 is going to top that? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. 
You might remember a few years ago, someone went viral on YouTube with a video called I Crash My Airplane. It was all for more likes, but now that guy, whose name is Trevor Jacob, is going to jail. Specifically, he's been sentenced to six months in federal prison. This follows a guilty plea in June for one count of destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. In addition to lying to the investigators about the need to crash his plane, he lied about the location of the wreckage, which he had in fact gone back and destroyed. In fact, he went to the crash site with a friend by helicopter, airlifted the wreckage to a trailer attached to his pickup truck, drove the wreckage to an airport, unloaded it in a hangar, cut it up and then threw all the pieces out in trash bins at the airport and elsewhere. In a sentencing memorandum, prosecutors said Jacob, quote, exercised exceptionally poor judgment in committing this offense. I'll say. But what does our TikTok audience think? Is a sentence too harsh for a victimless crime, or too light for public endangerment plus a cover up, or just about right? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Electric vehicles are the way of the future, and largely the way of the present, but you might want to be careful taking them on the highway. Consumer Reports recently tested a number of EVs and found that nearly half fell short of their estimated range, one by roughly 50 miles. The standards set by the Environmental Protection Agency are range estimates that combine city and highway driving. And since EVs are generally less efficient on highways than they are in cities, pure highway driving could run down your battery faster than expected. And trust me, you do not want to get stuck on the highway with an empty battery. The Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck had the biggest range disparity. Consumer Reports says it fell short by roughly 50 miles. That's quite a bit. The Lucid Air and the Tesla Model S were other noteworthy models both falling short of their estimated range by about 40 miles. These numbers certainly feed into one of the main hesitations people have about buying an EV, that they just don't go far enough on a single charge. Do you think more people would convert to an EV if they could go farther, without having to stop to find a charging station on the side of the road? Let us know in the comments and make sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And unfortunately, for some scam artists, it's beginning to look a lot like opportunity. The New York Post just wrote an article about this, and here are the five helpful tips they have to keep you safe. Let unknown calls go to voicemail. Always a good idea, and it might even help your social life. Verify through official channels. If a call doesn't seem legitimate, get in touch with the company yourself. In case of credit cards, the good number to call should be printed right on them. Search for the number. Though they change them up fast, chances are you're not the first person to get a suspicious call from that number, and many will have taken the time to report them. Keep your info close to the vest. Remember, if someone was actually calling from, say, Amazon, they already have all your account info. Which brings us to the last point, slow down. Scammers will always try to make things seem extremely urgent. But if you ever encounter a real problem with these giant corporations, it'd be very clear that things don't need to be resolved that minute. Got any tips of your own to add? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. It's December, which means the year-end lists are starting to roll in. And one of our favorites is always Wikipedia's list of articles that got the most views. After all, Wikipedia is one of the most used sites on the internet with around 26 billion page views every month. So their annual list provides a fascinating insight into what was on people's minds. It's probably not a huge surprise, but the most searched English language entry of 2023 was ChatGPT. The AI chatbot and AI in general was in the news a lot this year. From the Biden administration's executive order to develop safety standards, to concerns about AI taking people's jobs, to lawyers getting in trouble for using ChatGPT to write legal briefs, it was everywhere. That led to close to 50 million people checking out ChatGPT's Wikipedia entry. Second spot on the list went to deaths in 2023 with nearly 43 million page views. 
Cricket was also big this year, with 2023 Cricket World Cup and Indian Premier League taking third and fourth, with about 38 million and 32 million views respectively. And the movie Oppenheimer rounded out the top five with over 28 million, and presumably some of those people also went on to learn about Oppenheimer the person. What hot topic did you spend the most time checking out in 2023? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. A woman in Ohio who threw hot food onto a Chipotle employee's face has been handed a unique sentence. She'll have to get a job at a fast food restaurant. Rosemary Hain was caught on video in September freaking out over her burrito bowl before pelting it into the worker's face. She was quickly apprehended by police because it was an online order which included her contact information. In court, she pleaded guilty and the judge gave her a choice of either 90 days in jail or 30 30 days in jail plus 60 days working in fast food, and she picked the latter. She definitely got lucky overall. The judge said that, quote, every time you watch the video, it makes you more and more upset, and that it was the first time he'd handed down this kind of sentence. But get this, despite everything, Haynes still played the victim in court, trying to justify her actions by complaining about the food she'd gotten at the restaurant. The judge correctly pointed out she's not likely to be happy with the food she'll be getting in jail. I'd like to hope she learns her lesson when faced with customers who lose their minds over dumb things, but do you think she's getting a suitable punishment? Also, is it fair to the actual fast food employees who will have to work with her? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Hey Fortnite players, time to order a more comfortable gaming chair because you'll be needing it. The game has just launched a new collaboration with LEGO and it's going to be even more addictive. In LEGO Fortnite, players will harvest LEGO resources for builds where they can create villages, farm, and go on adventures where they'll face the elements and enemies. If that reminds you at all of Minecraft, aka the best selling game of all time, well you're not wrong. But no, it's not just a rip off. LEGO Fortnite harkens back to Fortnite's earliest days when it had a crafting survival mode, you know before its battle royale mode blew up? As for LEGO Fortnite's gameplay, there's a creative mode where you just enjoy the whole building process, or a survival mode with dangers like wolves and skeletons plus environmental risks like heat and hunger. And you can play in the mapped area nearly 20 times the size of the Battle Royale Island. Sounds pretty good, right? Now if you're wondering how much this upgrade will cost, the answer is nothing. It's a free addition to your existing Fortnite. So, are you looking forward to giving LEGO Fortnite a try? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. McDonald's has opened its first Cosmic's drive through cafe. The chain's new standalone concept is taking a page from the Starbucks book, offering fancy beverages perfect for a tasty pick-me-up and social media photos. And it already looks like a hit. People at the new Cosmic's in Bolinbrook, Illinois, waited in line for up to three hours to get their first tastes. Coffee-based options include churro frappe, s'mores cold brew and turmeric spiced latte. On the non-coffee front, there's tropical spice aid, sour cherry energy burst, and popping pear slush. And everything can be customized with extras like popping boba, vitamin C or energy shots, flavor syrups, and more. Cosmics offer some food options too, most of them unique to the new brand. Think pretzel bites, spicy queso sandwiches, and McPops, which are little sweet filled donuts. In good news for McDonald's breakfast lovers, there are also Egg McMuffins. McDonald's expects to launch 10 Cosmics by the end of 2024. So what do you think? Should Starbucks be worried and is this a place you'd like to check out? Let us know in the comments comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Far-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones has been allowed back on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> the InfoWars host was banned back in 2018 for violating the site's abusive behavior policy. And as recently as 2022, X's CEO Elon Musk said Jones wouldn't be reinstated. But this weekend, Musk posted a poll asking users if they thought he should be allowed back and about 70% of the nearly 2 million voters said yes. 
Jones promptly showed up on the site and began posting, even appearing on an X Spaces live stream with Musk. The move's timing is definitely interesting. Multiple major advertisers have recently abandoned X, partly to avoid their ads appearing near disinformation and hateful or controversial content, otherwise known as the content Alex Jones is famous for. What is my problem? Ugh. Musk has even said the site could go under because of the loss of advertising revenue, so the decision to welcome back a notorious and very divisive personality is pretty surprising. Do you think Musk made the right decision? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Shohei Otani is a generational talent and now he's getting paid like one. The two-way superstar signed with the LA Dodgers for a record-setting $700 million over 10 years. To put that in context, that's roughly $10 million a year more than Damian Lillard of the Milwaukee Bucks makes and he previously had the highest salary in American sports. Damian Lillard! Are you kidding me? It's also 10 to 20 million more a year than Lionel Messi is making playing for Inter Miami, and overall it's 275 million more than his former teammate Mike Trout signed for in 2019. And it's worth noting that due to an elbow injury, Otani won't even pitch next season. What makes this signing impressive from a Dodgers perspective is it's clearly about winning. The team already has incredible attendance, so this will barely make a dent, and international merchandise and TV sales go towards all the clubs. But what do you think? Is the addition of Otani enough to turn the Dodgers into a dynasty? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Paris was already the city of light, but somehow even more light is shining on it right now. That's because it just topped Euromonitor International's Top 100 City Destinations Index for 2023. As it turned out, it was a big year for Europe which snagged 63 of those 100 spots and 7 of the top 10. But they didn't get the silver, which went to Dubai. Third spot went to Madrid and fourth went to Tokyo, which cracked the top 10 for the first time. If you're curious what America's top city destination was, that'd be New York, which finished 8th, well ahead of 19th place LA. And finally, if volume is what impresses you, Istanbul had the most international visitors for the year. But enough about what some fancy report has to say, what would be your top city destination? Let us know in the comments and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Epic Games, maker of the wildly popular Fortnite video game, has won its lawsuit against Google. That suit alleged that Google Play is basically an illegal monopoly. That's because currently, apps for Android devices can only be sold and billed through Google Play, which charges transaction fees of up to 30%. But back in 2020, Epic filed a lawsuit claiming antitrust violations. It's taken this long to work its way through the courts, and now Epic has won the battle. The ruling could open up new distribution options for all apps and let developers keep more of their sales revenues, or potentially even lower their prices. I say could and potentially because following the ruling, Google defended its business model and said it plans to appeal. And it is worth noting that Epic also sued Apple and its App Store, and the courts ruled mostly in Apple's favor. So it's still possible that this ruling will be overturned, but for now, it is an epic victory. Do you think the court made the right decision, or should Google and Apple be allowed to profit from all the third-party apps that go onto the phones they make? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The COP28 climate summit has achieved something no previous meeting has. For the first time, delegates from nearly 200 countries have agreed that we need to move away from planet warming fossil fuels. This agreement, known as the global stock take, is obviously progress, but there are many critics who argue it doesn't go nearly far enough. Many are upset that it doesn't call for a phase out of oil, coal, and gas. That language was in an earlier draft and was supported by over a hundred countries, but didn't make the final cuts. There is also a lot of concern that countries have been given way too much wiggle room, particularly given that the goal is to keep the global temperatures within 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit of the pre-industrial era, and we're already 2.2 degrees above. What do you think? Is the world finally starting to take the threat of climate change more seriously, or is this just lip service? Comment below and be sure to follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. 
Tesla is recalling over 2 million of its vehicles in the United States. That's almost all the Teslas ever sold in the country. The reason? Well, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration spent two years investigating Tesla's autopilot and determined it, quote, may not be sufficient to prevent driver misuse. Basically, the autopilot feature lets the cars steer, speed up, and slow down automatically, and the enhanced autopilot also lets them change lanes on the highway, but it doesn't make the vehicles fully autonomous. However, the NHTSA found that the way autopilot ensured drivers were still paying attention wasn't adequate, and that it was foreseeable the system would be misused. In other words, Tesla's autopilot can allow drivers to act like the car is autonomous and not pay attention while on the road, as many drivers did, and that may have caused hundreds of crashes. The company will send an over-the-air software update that'll fix the issue so owners don't need to do anything except actually drive responsibly. What do you think though? Is it fair for the NHTSA to make Tesla responsible for its car owner's bad behavior? Or does Tesla have a duty to ensure those owners have to behave? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The NBA has handed Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors an indefinite suspension. It's because of a wild hit he made on Phoenix Suns player Yusuf Nurkic. Take a look. Beal just picked up his third foul. And now Green runs over Nurkic and he'll be called for the foul. And they're going to take a look at this. Oh, man. Oh, man is right. The NBA says it made the decision to suspend him indefinitely because of Green's repeated history of unsportsmanlike acts. They're not kidding. This is Green's sixth career suspension and his second this season alone. The last time was barely a month ago after he put Minnesota Timberwolves center Rudy Gobert into a headlock. And over his career, Green's been ejected from 18 games, three this season. Yeah, repeated history of unsportsmanlike acts sounds accurate to me. The NBA says that Green won't be reinstated until he meets certain league and team conditions. What do you think those conditions should be? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. If you like your news anchors enhanced, and some of you clearly do, prepare yourselves for news anchors generated by AI. Next year, a new news organization based out of Los Angeles called Channel One is set to become the first nationally syndicated news station with AI avatars delivering the news. Some of these AI anchors will be entirely generated, some will be based on human anchors, and apparently some of the bigger stories will still be covered by actual humans. Also, there will reportedly be humans checking all the stories for accuracy for now. So you might be asking yourselves, other than this being nifty, what are the advantages? Well, for one thing, individual viewers could eventually get personalized newscasts. After a while of picking stories, an algorithm will soon be able to give you a tailored experience. It can also be a new source for everyone, since translation can happen instantaneously. What does our TikTok audience think? Are you ready for AI anchors delivering the news? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The World Health Organization wants governments to ban flavored vapes, otherwise known as e-cigarettes. They say the action is urgently needed to minimize the harm they cause. Thousands of flavors are available and are often targeted at young people through the use of cartoon characters and social media. As a result, in the UK alone, vaping by underage people has tripled in the past three years. And because e-cigarettes with nicotine are highly addictive and harmful, the experts are worried. Vapes generate toxic substances which can cause cancer and raise risks of heart and lung disorders. They can also affect brain development and lead to learning disorders. The WHO wants countries that already ban vapes to keep enforcement strong, and it wants countries that still allow vapes to impose regulations which would make it less appealing. That includes banning all flavors, limiting tobacco concentration, and implementing taxes. So what do you think? Should governments be doing more to prevent people from taking up vaping? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. A 17-year-old British boy who went missing six years ago has turned up in France. 
In late September of 2017, 11-year-old Alex Batty headed to Spain on a trip with his mother and grandfather, which sounds nice, but they then disappeared with him. In a BBC interview in 2018, his grandmother, who was his legal guardian, said she believed the mother and grandfather had kidnapped him. She thought they were seeking an alternative lifestyle and were headed to a spiritual community in Morocco. With no word about his whereabouts for six years and no contact in that time, Alex was just miraculously found by a motorist in France. He was walking alone in the rain at 3 a.m. along a highway in the Pyrenees mountain area. He said he had come from the mountains but didn't know where and had been walking for four days. He also said he had been in France for the last two years. Alex used the motorist's Facebook account to contact his grandmother in the UK, telling her he loved her and wanted to come home. He'll be reunited with his grandmother soon, and in the meantime, authorities are on the hunt for his mother and grandfather. An amazing story with a happy ending. Thanks for watching the Bikini Report. Make sure to like and follow us for more daily headlines. Prince Harry presumably isn't hard up for money, but his big win in court over the publisher of the Daily Mirror is rewarding in all kinds of ways. Harry was awarded the equivalent of roughly $180,000 after the court ruled he'd been the victim of unlawful information gathering by Britain's Mirror group of tabloid newspapers. The court found that 15 out of the 33 articles about Prince Harry that were subject of the trial were the product of phone hacking of his mobile phone. Harry continues to call on the police to take action against those found to have committed crimes, and you'd think they'd almost have to at this point. In a statement read by his lawyer after the verdict, the Duke of Sussex said this case is not just about hacking, it is about a systematic practice of unlawful and appalling behaviour followed by cover-ups and destruction of evidence. He even called out his nemesis, Piers Morgan, who was the editor of the Sunday Mirror at the time. Well, I knew nothing about this, it was never going to be a huge story in the Mirror, it never got suppressed for the reasons he is trying to insinuate, I think it's nonsense, the whole thing. After this verdict, do you think there should be more than just fines for these tablets? Maybe some criminal charges for hacking people's phones? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. If the answer was, this Big Bang Theory actress is no longer a host of the syndicated version of Jeopardy, the question would be, who is Mayim Bialik? In a social media post, Bialik said that Sony had informed her that she would no longer be a host of the long-running game show. A spokesperson for Sony later said the company had decided to go with one host, i.e. Ken Jennings, to maintain continuity for viewers. Obviously, Mayim still has her Emmy nomination and presumably more primetime specials. So did Sony make the right move here? Are you Team Bialik or Team Jennings? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Apple is putting a pause on sales of its latest smartwatches in the US. This is due to a patent dispute that they just lost. The problem stems from the device's blood oxygen sensors, which a federal trade agency found violated another company's patent. In light of the ruling, Apple has decided to stop selling these smartwatches while it considers its legal options. So if you want one and are in the US, you better act now. The pause takes effect Thursday for online sales and Sunday for in-store purchases. Thanks for watching the Bikini Report. Make sure to give us a like and follow for more daily headlines. Actor Jonathan Majors is officially out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Majors was just convicted of two misdemeanor counts of harassment and assault stemming from a March incident with his then-girlfriend. Majors could now be looking at a year in prison. Sentencing is scheduled for February 6th. Meanwhile, Marvel's decision is no surprise, but it is a major shakeup for the MCU. Majors' character Kang the Conqueror was supposed to be the central villain of its ongoing multiverse saga. Thankfully, Marvel has already bought itself some time. Avengers The Kang Dynasty, which was supposed to start shooting early next year, had its release date pushed from 2025 to 2026. So what do you think? Should Marvel eventually bring Majors back into the fold? Or is his career in the MCU done forever? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and be sure to like and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. 
We've all heard the term buyer beware, but an elderly French couple recently learned the hard way that sellers need to beware too. Not too long ago, they brought in a second hand dealer to help them clear out their attic, and they ended up selling him an African mask for around $165. Well, they just lost their court case asking for their share of what the dealer got when he sold it for $4.6 million. Turns out the mask was made by the Fang people of Gabon, and there are only believed to be about 10 of its kind in the world. Much of the case hinged on whether the dealer knew the mask was that valuable, and he claimed he didn't. He also said he demonstrated goodwill by offering the couple roughly 330 grand, which was what the mask was initially appraised at. But they opted to sue instead, and now they get nothing, with the judge saying they failed to exercise due diligence. So what do you think about the judge's decision? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines.